Hey family and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So it is kind of a cloudy day today here in the park and uh, I still wanted to go ahead and crank it out because I still think that the weather is beautiful out here and it, it's still not so bad but in the background you'll probably hear um, it's the guy in here who's cutting the grass. Lucky us today so um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and plunge through. But today, anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys about this book right here, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And it's The Secret to Love That Last. This book, y'all, I've been meaning to do a book review on this particular book for quite some time. It has many different um, valuable lessons and just valuable stories in here valuable things that we all could use in our relationships whether you are actually in a relationship or not um, these are the five love, love languages that you always hear people refer to which is again the book by it's by Gary Chapman again as you see this is a number one New York Times bestseller this book has been has sold millions of copies and it is so relevant it's so relevant that now he actually has the five languages five love languages for children for teenagers for singles like he has a whole line of them and I do plan on getting the one for the five languages for um, children uh, because I think that that is very important to at least understand what your child's love language is as well so you can love your children the way that they need to be loved and then so they're not searching and seeking out that type of love because they did not receive it from their parents so I think I think that that's important too and also also if you have teenagers as well that one is, would be a great resource as well but anyway so let's just go ahead and jump right into what I talked about and so just for the sake of you guys who have never heard of what the five languages, five love languages are, they are, the first one is words of affirmation. We have quality time. We have acts of service. We have phys physical, I can't even speak today, physical touch and receiving gifts. Of course, lots of us love to receive gifts. So I just wanted to give you guys some um insight in between each one of them i also feel that this one is just very important to do because a lot of people um not a lot of people i'm sorry i've seen another channel doing a review she she actually was going to talk about each one of them separately i'm not i'm going to do a book review the entire book review today and i'll link her channel up here um, I, because i can't think of her name right now but anyway the first one for words of affirmation this is if you understand and know that you absolutely need words of affirmation in your relationship, he said that it is best expressed in simple, straightforward statements such as words that build you up. For example, you look great in that dress or encouraging words to, um, to inspire and encourage. You have great ideas. You really should submit those articles or just something that you're encouraging your spouse with. Um, I don't know if y'all can see this, but why did it just start to sprinkle it out here? So <laughs> really, because it never rains in San Diego, but it, it started to sprinkle out here today. And I'm looking like, really? So I'm going to go ahead and plunge through. Um, so those would be words of affirmation, okay? And obviously I have some notes down here, which is why I keep looking down, okay? So now we're going to move on to quality time. This is the undivided attention that you are giving to your spouse. It's also called focused attention. And this communicates that we care about each other, that we enjoy being around each other, and that we like doing things together. Together. Um, you can also have quality conversation between the two individuals and then also quality activities. So not only does he talk about the specific five love languages, as you see, he also has the sub languages underneath each um, topic. So that one that was really great for me to take from this book. I am a person that absolutely loves quality time like that is one of my top love languages along with physical touch. But anyway, so um, yeah, having great quality conversation is like on point for me. And then doing activities or having great quality activities that we both enjoy doing together is something that really, really stands out to me. So yes, that will be quality time if you understand that you love and need quality time in your um, life so that your partner understands that this is how they need to express it to you. 
The next one is receiving gifts. And a lot of people um, kind of think of receiving gifts in a wrong way, as in they always look at it as being like a gold digger or whatever. But you have to understand what you like and what you actually need in your relationship. And just because we talk about receiving gifts, it doesn't mean that you have to go out and get the all the time the elaborate things. It's the Really, I always say it. It's the, always the simple things, y'all. It's the simple things that we need to start thinking about how to keep our relationship going. It's not the grandiose things that makes the relationship go on and on and on or that you really appreciate. You want somebody that is consistent, like I said the other day, and then you want somebody that absolutely has your back. And then understand that receiving gifts, actually, this is what Gary Chapman said. This is not my words, but he said that this is the best investment to become the best gift giver so if you know that your partner loves receiving gifts then you should hear hear what the person is saying to you and then every once in a while um you can purchase something that they said so the best way to do this is to make a list to start keeping a list not make a list but to start keeping a list of some of the things that your partner has said that you've heard them say over the years if you get guys been together for years or if this is a new partner start making a list of things that you hear your partner say and then every once in a while you can start cashing in on some of those things and absolutely your partner will understand and see how much you are actually love them because you are starting to do these things not only for your partner but also for your relationship and that is going to be a way for your partner to fall for you as well because you are listening to what they need and you are supplying that need and you can't help but to fall in love for some to fall in love with somebody that has your back so just absolutely listening to what they have to say would be a great thing all right so now acts of service let's move on to acts of service a lot of times we think about this and we're like okay what kind of what, what, are, what are acts of service and really it is anything that your partner likes with, that you do for them so it could be cleaning up the house it could be rearing the children it could be bringing them a cup of coffee it could be bringing um, them a book that you found um, that's kind of a gift but still acts of service they might have asked for the remote control just something very simplistic it doesn't have to be a big thing it could be mowing the lawn it could be servicing the car so acts of service is something that your partner is thinking about how you love them basically the way that you show them love is by doing these things like one of the stories in here is where the man was kind of um i'm sorry the woman in here was kind of upset because the husband was spending a lot of time with her um but he wasn't able to help out with the domestic duties and she was feeling like she wasn't being heard or anything because of this very thing and um anyway when they talked to dr um Chapman about this he basically just explained that you're loving your wife the wrong way she doesn't want you to um, she, of course she wants you to spend quality time with her but that's not really where she feels like you are showing her that you love her she feels that you are showing her that you love her when you do these things for her like bring her the cup of coffee or help folding up the laundry or etc whatever it is that she was liking so you have to really understand what your partner needs what your partner likes and that way you can deliver that very thing to them all right let me move on to the last one um the last one is physical touch now most of us love physical touch now just let me just say for our gentlemen out there a lot of you guys um equate physical touch with sex and that is not necessarily true okay i'm not saying that you can't equate physical sex um physical touch with sex but that is not the ultimate goal when a person is saying that they need to be touched they really are saying that they just need to be caressed sometimes for you to just walk by and i always say smack them on the butt but that's my thing smack them on the butt just rub their shoulder, look into their eyes, you know, while you're touching them, looking into their eyes, gazing into their eyes. But really, physical touch is just that. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to lead to sex when you think about physical touch. So don't get that twisted, gentlemen. Um, but physical touch, a person that needs physical touch, you literally have to, I call it snuggling or um just holding hands uh, wh while you're driving in the car, while you're sitting on the couch, or why why you, of course, are out on a date or something, uh, just holding the person's hand. But really, physical touch is you have to figure out what your partner actually absolutely likes because sometimes you could touch somebody and they get cringe, right? Um, in a particular area, or they don't want to touch, they don't want you to touch them there because they're ticklish or something. So you have to figure out the area that they like to be touched in. But literally, physical touch does not have to 
always lead to sex. Let me just reiterate that one more time. But just understand that if your partner needs to be physically touched and, and if it's not something that you want to do or are used to doing, then just practice doing the very small things. Don't think of it as being a horrible task like, oh my God, this is so overwhelming to me. He actually has a... a um, area in the back like basically the frequently asked questions that most people ask and this was one of the things that he was saying that what if my person's love language is something that's hard for me to do and basically what he explained is that it should not be something that's hard to do number one if you practice doing it but number two you're not doing it for you you are doing it for your partner so if you are doing it for your partner then it makes it easier for you to get on board to do whatever love language that your partner needs so if it's gifts give them gifts again it doesn't have to be the grandiose it could be something that you are walking past in the store and you happen to remember that was a, a dollar store item or something but your partner said that they wanted this particular thing get them the thing they're not going to be thinking about oh my god it was just a dollar unless you got a gold digger but if the person who likes to receive gifts is going to be happy anytime you get them anything even if you write them a love letter even if you like um make them something uh homemade other than love letter, but even if you make them like a craft or something they are going to be super stoked because you thought about them and you actually supplying that uh, uh, that need that they need to be feel uh, I'm sorry to feel love in their relationship um, he also has uh, a quiz in the back of this book uh, for men one for men and one for women and it's actually um, the five love languages profile for couples for him and then they and then he has the five love languages profile for couples for her and so i actually just printed out this so me and my fiance could take this we have not done it as of yet but i already printed it out for him and um then we'll sit down and discuss it because him and i love to have quality conversations so this would be a great conversation for him and i and i just think that this is a great book i am definitely giving it two thumbs up absolutely if you have not read this book definitely go ahead and pick it up of course i picked it up from amazon but i'm sure that this book is sold all over um, because this really is a great resource if you have no idea what the five love languages are and you want to um understand what they are other than just this book review uh, then you absolutely should pick this up this is the paperback copy and it has uh, let's see a little over 200 pages but that is also including the frequently asked questions as well as the um, little quizzes that you you and your partner could take and then just understand that once you have this information of course you have to apply it to your life because what does my search say knowledge is power but applied knowledge is better like you have to absolutely start to apply these things to your life so you can understand how to make your relationship better all right family thank you so much for coming out in the park with me once again i've been wanting to do this book review so thank you for sticking around until the end and if you have not checked out my online courses as of yet all of that information is down in the description box below because my courses are going to absolutely help you whether you are in the single stages whether you are in the dating stages or whether you are in a long-term relationship or married they're absolutely going to help you throughout all of those areas in your life to help you and your partner create happy healthy romantic relationships and of course bring you guys closer together Definitely give me thumbs up and I will see you again tomorrow. Deuces.